let's add some pillars to the distributed lag model in this video. Mainly let's understand how to interpret this slope coefficients. So first of all, over here, the effect of a change in price in the current period, assuming the current period is going to be 2019, right? The effect of a change in price in 19 on the sales in 2019, well, that's going to be the minus 0.8. That's a direct impact. That's why we call it the impact multiplier. What happens by changing the current period of the independent variable. Now, whenever we have an effect from one period before that, it happens with a delay, literally. So we literally call it a one period delay multiplier. In this case, it would be minus 0.6 based on our example. So what's going to be the change in sales if one period before that, the price increased by $1. And with the same logic, we can interpret the two periods delay multiplier because we have a delay in the effect on the outcome variable. And we saw the mechanism in the previous video that affects the sales in 17, eventually in 18. And after that, it affects the sales in 2019. So we have this, this vocabulary over here that we need to understand. What also matters is to understand what happens when the independent variable changes in more periods. So for instance, remember, these are partial effects in a regression line. This is the effect on the outcome variable when only this independent variable increases by one unit and we keep everything else constant. But what if the price in 2018 is going to increase by $1? And after that, the price in 2019 is going to increase by $1 as well. Remember, this is a time series. Everything happens across time. So this happens in a sequence. First of all, we're going to have the effect of beta 2. Let me go over here below to, to write it. First of all, we're going to have the effect of beta 2. So we're supposing that in the price in 2018 is going to increase by one unit, which is $1. We're going to have the effect of beta 2, which is equal to minus 0 0.6 based on our example. So minus 0 0.6. But then we also get to 2019. And in that case, the price would also increase by $1. Let's say that's the sales strategy of this company. So if that happens, then the effect from 2019 now it's going to be the slope coefficient of minus 0 0.8. So sales are going to go down by minus 0 0.8 times $1,000. So the total effect here from this change in independent variables is equal to minus 0 0.8 minus 0 0.6. It's minus 1.4. And we have some vocabulary for that as well. We're going to call this, we're going to call this the one period interim multiplier because the change happened from one period ago and in the current period as well. So it's like an intermediate effect from one period ago through the current effect. And we want to see what happens on the sales. And with the same logic, we could have, let me actually write it because we need to know what we're doing. One period interim multiplier. So that's the intuition of the one period interim multiplier. So it's not just the delay, it's the delay plus the current period effect interim multiplier with the same logic we can have two periods interim multiplier by going all the way back two periods ago so if the change in price starts happening in 2017 over here let's let's not forget what we're doing over here it starts changing and eventually one year passes the price increases in 2018 as well and one more year passes and the price increases in 2019 as well all this flow from two periods ago and via the current period is called the two periods interim multiplier we go from the legs until the current period and we see what the effect is on the outcome variable so that'll be minus 0 0.8 minus 0 0.6 minus 0 0.4 so let's write it over here below uh, also with this arrow i'm gonna do it real fast um, so it's gonna be like that we're starting two years ago so I already forgot the numbers, but you got the idea. It would be minus 0 0.8 plus minus 0 0.6, minus 0 0.8 plus minus 0 0.6, and also the minus 0 0.4 from two years ago. So that's minus 1.4 minus 0 0.4, that's minus 1.8. That would be equal to minus 1.8. That would be equal to two periods interim multiplier. That would be our two periods interim multiplier. So two periods interim interim multiplier, which happens to be called also to the total effect. And what's the intuition of the total effect? Basically, what is the total change in sales when the price is going to increase by one unit in every period? So in every period, we have a partial effect. And logically, the total effect is going to be the sum of the partial effects. So if we add all this up, we would get to the same number. So that's the vocabulary that we need to know. Some impact multiplier, period, interim, total, and that's it. Hope this makes sense and we're done.